A new name for Lois, by Joanne Mattern, illustrated by David Sheldon. Driving to Anchorage, March twenty seventh, nineteen sixty four, was a day that Lois would never forget. It started as an ordinary day, however. Things quickly became very different. Lois was a member of the Inuit tribe. That day, her tribe was having a festival. The festival was in the city of Anchorage, Alaska. It was several miles from the small cabin where Lois and her grandpa lived. Grandpa complained a little about driving the car all the way to Anchorage. It was a long drive. Then they needed to drive through the city itself. To meet Lois's brother Paul before they went to the festival, Lois and Grandpa get ready to drive to Anchorage. Cabin, car, tire. Grandpa sang as he drove. He sang so loudly that Lois could not hear the sound of the tires on the rocky dirt road. Maybe that was why Lois and Grandpa did not hear the strange humming sound in the air either. Earthquake. After a while, they turned onto the main road to Anchorage. It was very smooth. Suddenly, Lois saw the telephone poles along the road rise up in the air one by one. First, they rose six feet into the air. Then they snapped off like tree branches and quickly fell to the ground. The highway seemed to break apart. Lois knew people could surf on water. Now it felt like the car was surfing on the road. It moved up and down like it was on the waves in the ocean. Trees popped out of the ground. The dirt on the side of the road fell away. Lois could see the roots of the trees. The ground trembled, but the car kept going. Stop the car! Lois shouted. Grandpa could not hear her. There was a roar that sounded like a train riding under them. The earth sounded like it was screaming. Lois saw other cars drive sideways and smash into each other. It was like a wild ride at the county fair. The road tips and slides sideways. Telephone poles, tree roots. Lois screamed. Her grandfather could not control the car. She could not help him. Around them, cars slid and people fell. They kept driving even as the cracks in the road got bigger and bigger. Then Lois heard a huge howling noise. One side of the road fell. A huge slab of the road went down into a big hole. The slab took Lois, her grandfather, and more cars down into the hole with it. The car falls into the hole as the road breaks up. The land changes. Lois saw the land change right in front of her eyes. Houses moved down the road beside them. Some houses slid down the hill. A few houses rolled over and broke into pieces. Water pipes broke. The shaking pulled electric and gas lines out of the ground, and now they hung in the air. Water and sparks sprayed into the air too. The sky filled with smoke. Lois saw fire and the wreckage of broken buildings everywhere. Houses break apart as they fall. Smoke. Water pipe. Everything seemed like it was happening slowly. Grandpa stopped driving, but the car kept moving. Then the car hit the ground. Lois and Grandpa bounced hard in their seats. Grandpa hit his head on the roof of the car. The ground still shook. The howling noise continued. Lois looked out the window. She saw the water in the bay. It was much closer to the road than it was before the shaking started. Water rushed toward them. 
Grandpa hits his head when the car hits the ground. Lois saw a big hole in the bay. It looked like water going down a big drain in a bathtub. Then mud shot up from the bottom of the bay. A few houses fell into the hole. They fell so deep that Lois only saw their rooftops. She knew people had lost all the possessions that they owned. She looked at the broken water pipes and the telephone poles that hung from their wires. Bricks popped off buildings like popcorn. Rubble was everywhere. Then, the terrible noise stopped. Suddenly, everything was very quiet. Bricks fall and pipes break all around the car. Bay, rooftop, brick. Finding a way out. Lois knew an earthquake had just happened. Earthquakes were not new to her, but she had never been in an earthquake this big, though. She looked at Grandpa. He held his head. We're okay, Grandpa, Lois said. But maybe we are not really okay, she thought to herself. She looked at the hills around them. Debris was everywhere. She saw timbers from the broken buildings lying all over the road. Lois's family called her Little Hare because she always ran around quickly like a little rabbit or hare. She always tried to do everything at once. She never focused on finishing just one thing at a time. Now Little Hare needed to do so many things to help make her and Grandpa safe. She had to think hard about what to do first. Lois knew that smaller earthquakes called aftershocks sometimes followed a big earthquake. They were very dangerous too. She had to be careful. Grandpa rubbed his head again. Lois looked around. She could not open her car door. A big rock was next to it. Lois crawled over the front seat to the back of the car. Then she went out the back door. She started to throw rubble out of her way. Like a little hare, she tried to push everything at once. This meant nothing got done. Lois crawls into the back of the car to open the door. Seat. Lois was very scared. No one could help her. Instead, she had to help herself. Luckily, she was strong for her age. She used all her strength when she pushed away piles of bushes and rocks. Then she moved pieces of furniture. The car was still under a lot of dirt, though. She looked at Grandpa. He still held his head. Lois ran back to the car. She was worried about Grandpa. She pulled hard at the door next to him. "Relax, little hare," Grandpa said. "Your brother Paul will come and help us." Lois did not think she needed her brother. She saw electrical wires shooting out sparks. They looked like fireworks. Then a water tower fell over, and water poured over the ground. Little Wolf, Lois had to focus. It was hard for her to think about just one thing. She thought about all the things she wanted to do yesterday. She wanted to make a flute out of wood. Talk to her friends and learn more of the Inuit language all at the same time. Lois stopped and thought for a moment. Then she had an idea. She would push the rocks in front of the car to the side. This would make a path in front of the car. Then they could drive away before the hill fell on top of them, crushing the car. Lois moved slowly. She thought carefully about what she wanted to do. First, she found a big piece of timber and used it to push a large rock away from the car. Then she constructed bridges over the big cracks in the road. She used pieces of wood that fell from a tenement to make them. She built a ramp from the main road to a side road. Thankfully, that road was still in one piece. Lois worked for a while. Then she climbed back to Grandpa. He looked much better. I made a path, 
Lewis told him proudly. I think we can drive out of here. Lewis makes a bridge over the cracks in the road. Piece of wood. I do not need your brother to help, Grandpa said. I have little hair with me. Grandpa started the car. He drove slowly over the bridge Lois had made with the pieces of wood. Soon they saw Paul riding his bicycle to find them. Grandpa told him what Lois did. Today, you are not little hair anymore, Paul said. You were able to focus well. You have become little wolf. Lois smiled. The power of the earthquake had taught her a simple skill. Now she knew how to stay focused and get the job done. Lois and Grandpa are happy to see Paul on his bicycle. Responding, target skill, sequence of events. In what order do events happen in this book? Copy and complete the chart below. Write about it, text to text. Have you read another book in which characters have to act quickly? Write a paragraph that tells what happens in that story. Describe the events in the order they happened. Target vocabulary: constructed, crushing, debris, possessions, rubble, slab. Tenement, timbers, trembles, wreckage. Target skill: sequence of events. Examine the time order in which events take place. Target strategy: visualize. Use text details to form pictures in your mind of what you are reading. Genre: historical fiction is a story whose characters and events are set in history.